To continue solving this problem, we will use boundary conditions that the wave function psi and the derivative or slope of the wave function must be continuous at the interfaces between region 1 and 2 and regions 2 and 3. This must be true because the function that defines the particle cannot have any discontinuities. We will simplify the function so that we don't have to carry around so many constants. As a result, we define k to be equal to the square root of 2me divided by h bar, and we define alpha to be the square root of 2m u naught minus e divided by h bar. When we are done, we will find that the bound states are quantized and that they're defined by two lines, being that tan times k alpha is equal to alpha over k, and that negative cotan of k alpha is also equal to alpha over k. Let's now apply these boundary conditions to then solve for and find the bound states for, these, for this problem. So right here, what I have written down to start off with is I have the, the wave function solutions that we just determined for the three regions. And so in region 3, we have Fe to the negative alpha x. In region 2, we have C cos kx plus d sine kx. And in region 1, we have Ae to the alpha x, where I've done the substitutions in for alpha and k that I defined on the previous slide. What we need to do, though, is we also have to find the derivatives of all these functions so we can start relating them together at the boundaries, at negative a and at a, which are the boundaries of the well. So in this case, the derivative of the wave function in region 3, fe to the negative alpha x, well, that derivative is just going to be equal to negative alpha fe to the negative alpha x. For in region 2, where we take the derivative of both pieces, and so the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so I'm going to get negative c times sine kx. Then I take the derivative of the inner function, which is just k times x, and so I'm left with just a k that comes out. So I get negative k times c sine kx. For the second term, the d sine kx, well there I take the derivative of the outer function, which just gives me cosine kx, and then I take the derivative of the inner function, which is the kx part, so then I get a k that comes out of that. And then finally, for region 1, a e to the alpha x, well in that case the derivative I just end up bringing down an alpha, alpha a e to the alpha x. And so all three of these, those are equal to the derivative of the wave function in all three of the regions. Now that I have the function and the derivative of each of the wave functions, one last piece of information which will be useful is a simple trig identity where if I have the cosine of a negative value, that's the exact same thing as the cosine of the value itself. And another piece of information that's really handy is that the sine of a negative value, well that's equal to the negative sine of the positive of that value. And so both these things will make it very easy so we can relate all the boundary conditions together once we sub in for at a and negative a. So let's do that now. Psi at negative a, well that just means that I'm going to be relating things between regions 1 and 2. So if I relate the, the, the wave functions, then I would say a e to the alpha at negative a, and that's going to be equal to the wave function in region 2, c times cosine negative k a plus d sine negative k a. And so you can see now I can start to use these two trig function identities that I just defined a second ago. I have a e to the negative alpha a, and that's equal to, well the cosine of a negative number is the same as the cosine of the positive number. So I have c cos k a, and then here I've got the sine of a negative number is the same as the negative of the sine, so I'm going to subtract d sine k a. Second thing I'm going to do is define the derivative at negative a, so here's d psi by dx at negative a, and so for that then what I'm going to be writing is now the derivatives between regions 1 and 2 and making them equal to each other, so I have alpha a e to the negative alpha a, and that's going to be equal to 
negative kc sine negative ka plus kd cosine negative ka. Again, I can write the exact same, or using the exact same trig identities. Here I'm just writing on the left hand side again, negative or alpha a e to the negative alpha a. Here I have the negative sine or the sine of a negative number, which is the same as the sine of a positive number with the minus sign out front, and that cancels out the minus sign I already have out front. So I get kc sine ka. And then here I've got the cosine of a negative number, which is the same as the cosine of a positive number, kd cosine ka. And so now I have all the relationships for my boundary conditions between regions 1 and 2 relating the wave function at negative a and the derivative of the wave function at negative a. Let's now do the exact same thing, but we're going to do it now at a. So psi at a, my boundary conditions, I'm now relating 2 and 3 together. So I'm going to have f e to the negative alpha a, and that's equal to c times the cosine of ka plus d times the sine of ka. And so in that case, I don't have to do any changes with these trig identities because I don't have any negative numbers within the sine and the cosine. I'm now also going to look at the derivative at a. And there I'm again, I'm relating the derivatives between regions 2 and 3. So I'm going to have negative alpha f e to the negative alpha a. And that's going to be equal to minus k c sine k a plus k d cos k a. And again, since I have no negative signs within the sine of the cosine terms, then I don't have to apply these trig identities here either. So now we have four equations, and we have four constants that are sitting out in front of all these wave functions, a, c, d, and f. And so our strategy now is to eliminate these four constants so that we can then get the solution that I presented to you before. And so how I'm going to do that is I'm going to be adding and subtracting various pieces of, of these. Essentially, I'll be adding and subtracting the wave functions, like the two wave function terms, and then adding and subtracting the derivatives of these two terms that I have written out. And then we'll then do some division and we'll essentially eliminate all of these constants. So let's do this in practice. So I'm going to have what I'm going to call equation one, and that's basically going to be adding together these two pieces, these two functions where I've got just the wave function at minus a and the wave function at a. So if I add those two together, I get a e to the negative alpha a plus f e to the negative alpha a, and that's going to be equal to c cos k a minus d sine k a, and that I'm going to be adding c cos k a plus d sine ka. And you can see here on the left hand side I have a minus d sine ka and a plus d sine ka. So those two terms cancel each other out. I also here have on the right hand side a c cos ka plus a c cos ka. So those two are going to add up. And on the left hand side I have a times e to the minus a alpha and f times e to the raised to the power of minus alpha a. And so I can distribute out the exponential term. So what I'm left with is a plus f, that's times e to the minus alpha a. And here I've got 2 times c cos ka. What I'm going to call equation 2 is going to be the subtraction of these two pieces of the boundary conditions. a e minus alpha a minus f e minus alpha a, that's equal to c times cos ka minus d sine ka. From that I'm going to subtract off c cos ka plus d sine ka. And so of course this minus sign distributes in, and so I'll just write that in explicitly. And so here again on the right hand side I have c cos ka minus c cos ka, and so those two terms are going to cancel out. 
I have also on the right hand side minus d sine ka minus d sine ka so those two terms are gonna add up here on the left hand side I have an e to the minus alpha a and an e to the minus alpha a so I can distribute out those terms so what I'm left with is a minus f times e to the minus alpha a and that's equal to minus 2 d sine ka we're now going to define what I'm calling equation 3 which has to do with now relating the derivatives of the wave functions which is what I'm underlining here this alpha a e to the negative alpha a equals to kc sine ka plus kd cos ka and the other one at x or that the between boundary for regions 2 and 3 at a is negative alpha fe to the negative alpha a is equal to negative kc sine ka plus kd cos ka so equation 3 will be the summation of these two so I have alpha sorry let me just use black we have alpha a e to the negative alpha a well I'm going to be adding a negative number so that will then be minus alpha f e to the negative alpha a and that's equal to k c sine k a plus k d cos k a and to that I'm going to be adding a negative number to start with so I'll write negative k c sine k a plus k d cos k a so here on the right hand side I have a k c sine k a minus k c sine k a so those two terms will cancel each other out I have a k d cos k a and another k d cos k a so those two terms will add and on the left hand side I have an alpha and an e to the minus alpha a in both terms so I can distribute that out so what I ultimately am left with is a minus f alpha e to the negative alpha a and that's equal to 2 k d cos k a finally let's define equation 4 that'll just be the subtraction of the two derivative terms so I'll have alpha a e to the negative alpha a well since I'm going to subtract a minus term then I'm going to write plus alpha f e to the negative alpha a on the right hand side I'm going to have k c sine k a plus k d cos k a and from that I'm going to subtract off negative k c sine k a plus k d cos k a so here I've got my I'm going to distribute in this minus sign that's sitting in front of my brackets on the right hand side and so I have minus minus and so what that's going to do is it's going to give me a plus and it's going to change this plus into a minus and so what I'm left with here now is I have kc sine ka kc sine ka so those two terms will add I have a kd cos ka minus kd cos ka so those two terms will cancel each other out and on the left hand side I have alphas and I have e to the negative alpha a e to the negative alpha a so those two terms will distribute out so I'm left with a plus f alpha e to the negative alpha a and that's equal to 2 k c sine k a